You know, I'm tired of talking about divisive, hot-button political issues all the time. Let's get down to it and talk about something that's just pure, uncontroversial science. Uh, let's let's see. I'll just uh, go over and look up some, some studies here in preventative medicine. Here we go. The temporal associations between gun violence and mental health. Oh, shit. So, yeah, that is the age-old question with... 30 mass shootings so far this year, and it's the first week of February. Does the U.S. have a gun problem or a mental illness problem? Are these just crazy people who would be out in the world committing murder regardless of whether or not they have uh, a gun? Or are these perfectly sane people who wouldn't have tried to kill anyone if they didn't have access to guns? Or is the truth somewhere in between? And that mass shooting statistic I quoted earlier is just one fun fact about the U.S. and guns. Uh, I could also point out that Americans have, uh, they own more guns per capita than anywhere else in the world. Yes, even more than Switzerland, ignorant Reddit commenter I happened to see the other day. Switzerland comes in 19th with 28 guns for every 100 citizens. Meanwhile, the U.S., has, are you ready for this? Because I had to triple check this, 121 guns for every 100 citizens. That's 1.2 guns per person. Holy shit. And I don't have any. So somewhere someone is just randomly opening up a junk drawer looking for a paperclip and a bunch of guns are jammed in there. Maybe you think that it's just because a few Americans uh, stockpile their guns, which they do. Uh, 3% of Americans own 50% of the guns. But even if you subtract them from the equation, that's still 170 million guns for 317 million people. So more than half a gun per, per person, which is more than twice of Switzerland's rate. Here's some more stats just for fun. 64% of all homicides in the U.S. happen with a gun compared to under 5% in England. Uh, guns killed nearly 40,000 people in the U.S. in 2017. Uh, that was the most people killed by guns in the U.S. in the previous 20 years until 2018 when we topped that number by about a 1,000, which then became the highest number in 50 years. It's absolutely a problem, and it would be nice to get to the bottom of what this problem is and how to solve it, which is why it's quite sad that the U.S. government has refused to fund its study for the past 20 years, which has led to even private industry dialing back all study of it. Luckily, we still have little pockets of scientific rebels out there, so we get research like this. Unfortunately, I have to be honest, this isn't that much. Yes, their conclusions were that there is no connection between mental illness and gun violence, but it's actually much narrower than that. Uh, this research involved surveys of 663 young people in Texas who were asked about their history of mental illness along with their history of gun ownership and usage. They found that gun owners were 18 times more likely than non-gun owners to threaten someone with gun violence. Which, like, it makes sense. Like, if you have a gun, you're more likely to say, I'm going to use this gun. Uh, they didn't find that people with me- mental illnesses were more likely to threaten people, except for those people who had high hostility, who were 3.5 times more likely to threaten someone. From this, the researchers' university came up with the press release headline of Mental Illness Not to Blame for Gun Violence Study Finds, which, come on, guys, No. I get just as annoyed as any other evidence-loving progressive when the media touts mental illness as the sole cause of gun violence in the U.S. And that happens after every mass shooting, at least every mass shooting with enough mass to even make a blip on the national news these days. But this study does not prove that mental illness isn't to blame for gun violence in the least. It didn't even examine actual gun violence. It only looked at people's self-reported tendency to threaten someone with gun violence. That's not to say that this research is useless. Uh, It's definitely an interesting piece of the puzzle, and it definitely deserves follow-up study. It's just not what the University of Texas's public relations team would have you believe. Because, in fact, mental illness is to blame for gun violence in part. It absolutely cannot be denied in any reasonable way that the two 
are unrelated. Everyone is quick to equate gun violence with mass shootings, but there are other forms of gun violence like suicide. Half of all suicides in the United States involve a gun. The majority of all gun deaths in the United States are suicides, two thirds. Suicide by gun is eight times more frequent in the United States compared to all other industrialized nations. It's a huge fucking problem. And I guarantee that a huge percentage of the people committing suicide have a mental illness. They're not all 90 year old patients with painful, incurable cancer. They're severely, dangerously depressed people. Does that mean that this is wholly a problem of mental illness and not guns? No, it's both, obviously. People try to commit suicide in other ways, and less than 5% of them succeed. The people who use a gun succeed 85% of the time. If those severely mentally ill people didn't have access to guns, we would save about 21,000 American lives each year just from suicide alone. That's one of the main reasons that I personally don't own a gun. I've talked about this before because a few years ago I was regularly getting uh, serious death threats and I was very concerned for my safety. But I know that I have really bad depression and uh, I know that owning a gun would make me three times more likely to kill myself and two times more likely to be killed by someone else. Those are the statistics. So yeah, in one survey of some 20-somethings in Texas, people were more likely to threaten someone with a gun if they own a gun, and not more likely to do so if they have a mental illness. But that doesn't mean that there's no connection between the two, and acknowledging that we have severe uh, mental illness problems doesn't make it any less urgent for us to control the great American gun problem as well.